In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your Lego Spike Prime robot move forward and backwards using Python code. Now, to get started on this tutorial, there's two things you're going to need. You're obviously going to need a robot that has been built using the Spike Prime kit, making sure you've got two wheels on it somewhere connected to two of the small motors. You're also going to need the Lego Education Spike app, which is what you can see on your screen at the moment. And actually, you've got that downloaded for free from the Lego Education website and installed on your computer. And once you have that, make sure you open it up. Once you've got it open, you will be greeted with a screen like this asking you if you want to use the Essential or the Spike Prime kit. We are using Spike Prime, so click on that option. And you'll be taken to the home screen, where I want you to look in the middle of the page for the new project button. It's just a plus sign there. Click on that. And when you make a new project, the first thing you're going to need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to give it a meaningful name called Moving Forward and Backward. Now you can use icon or word blocks to code up your robot today, but we're going to be fancy and use Python code. And we're going to click on Create to get started. Now once you are into the Python editor, we're going to clean up the page a little bit by removing the console at the bottom. Just by hitting those two horizontal lines. All the console is used for is basically to show errors in your code. So you can always hit those two horizontal lines to bring it back and hide it again. But for now, let's just keep it hidden. And on the right hand side of the knowledge base, you can hit the two vertical lines to make that appear and disappear as well. If you ever want to um, learn how to code your robot in a bit more detail than when I go, by all means, read through this knowledge base. It shows you how all the different parts of the robot work and how you can code them up to do different things. And that's how I learnt how to code um, it in Python using the Spike Prime robot. So it's really handy to have there, that little knowledge base. If you're ever stuck on something too, by all means, come over here and just have a flick through. For example, in the color sensor, it'll give you little snippets of code to get it working properly. And it can show you all the different things that the color sensor can do. All right, that's just one example. So there's lots of really good information in that knowledge base there. But for now, we're just going to hide it. Next thing I want to get rid of is the code that already comes preloaded into our editor here. That's just a working little program. Um, just basically show you how the robot can do stuff, but we're going to highlight it and press delete. We don't need to see it. Now I'm just going to zoom in by pressing the little plus magnifying glass at the bottom there as far as I can go. And finally, you need to make sure your robot is connected to your computer. So I can see that mine already is connected up the top here. It's got the green ring around the hub. That shows that it is connected. And I'm connected via the white USB cable that came in my kit. You can also see the two motors and the three sensors that are connected to my robot and which port each one of those is plugged into. Um, another way you can connect, which I'm not going to show you right now, but just tell you quickly, you can connect via Bluetooth. You need to make sure you've got Bluetooth turned on on your computer. And then you press the little Bluetooth button on your robot's hub and then click this little hub picture up here, which will probably be yellow if you're not connected. And that will bring up a list of um, available Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices that you can connect to. And you should be able to connect to your robot. Okay, and that will be all done without wires, which is super handy as well. All right, so we are pretty much good to go now. So let's get stuck into coding using a bit of Python. Now the first line of code in line number one that we're going to write in will simply read from Spike, oops, import motor pair. So I'll quickly try to explain this line of code. It can be a little bit confusing, but what we're doing here, the first part of this line that says from Spike, what we're doing is we're looking inside a big library of code that's been written by somebody else. Some other smart program has written a library of code and he's called it Spike. And inside of there, it contains all the functions or all the little snippets of code that make our robot work. And we're gonna dig through that library and pull out one part of that in particular. So one part of that code in particular called motor pair. So we're gonna be using that today to get our wheels or our movement motors spinning to make our robot move forward and backwards. There's other things you can import from the library. So for example, the color sensor or the, the eyes, which is the distance sensor. There's the force sensor. You can import code that relates to the hub to make it turn lights on or play sounds, for example. So there's lots of things you can import. Okay, and we're gonna look at them all in good time, but for today, we're starting simple. We're just gonna import one little snippet um, from that library called motor pair. Okay, so just remember this first line of code is just importing all the bits and pieces or basically all the ingredients you need to make your code or your recipe work. 
Okay, so we're just going to play with the wheels today. So we've got our motor pair um, module brought in to our program. And the word motor pair basically refers to the movement motors. So we've got two of them on our robot making our wheels move and they're going to work as a pair today. So they're going to spin at the same time and that's what the motor pair is all about. The two motors working together as a pair. All right, so that's probably confused you already, but don't worry, with a bit of practice, that'll start to make a bit more sense. So let's move on. It doesn't have to make sense right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell the computer which ports our movement motors or our wheels are plugged into. So I can already see, if I look at the top here, that in ports A and B, I have got my two wheels or my two small motors plugged into them. But I just need to tell the computer that with code now. So to do that, I'm going to write movement motors, and I've used an underscore there because this has to be one word. I'm going to come back to explain that in a sec. Movement motors equals motor pair, and in brackets and quotation marks, I'm going to write B, comma, A. And close off my quotation marks and brackets. Okay, so this line of code in simple terms is just telling the computer that my movement motors or my wheels are plugged into the ports A and B. So let's break it down a little bit here. The first section here, this here movement motors is just a name for my two wheels. It doesn't have to be movement motors. You can call it whatever you like, but just make sure it's something meaningful. So you could call it wheels if you wanted to. Um, I've called it movement motors. Whatever you come up with is fine, as long as you've got it as one word. I've got an underscore between movement and motors just to make it one big word. Okay, so once you've got the name for your wheels, you need to write equals motor pair. So it's just telling you that the motors are going to be teamed up as a pair. And the two motors we are using are plugged into ports B and A. Now, why didn't I write A and then B? Okay, now the reason for that is if I was to put A comma B, my robot would actually drive backwards. So I need to write B comma A. I'm not sure why um, Spike does that. But for most of the time, you'll need to write B first and then A second. And if they're in that order, your robot should eventually, in a moment, drive forwards without an issue. If it drives backwards, when it shouldn't be, then you'll just need to switch those letters around. Okay, so a little bit confusing there. So if your robot is ever driving backwards when it should be driving forwards, it's usually just a case of switching these letters around. All right, so again, I'm probably babbling on too much and confusing you, but what that has done in simple terms has told the computer what ports my wheels are plugged into. I'm actually going to put in something now called a comment. Now, a comment is just plain, simple English that is explaining what's happening in my code. And we write a comment by putting a hashtag first and then just telling um, the computer what's happening in our code here. So I'm just going to say set up the movement motors, I'm just going to put wheels in brackets. Now the computer knows as soon as it sees a hashtag that what comes after it is a comment and it's not actually code. It's just there to help explain to other people who read your program what's happening in the code here. So the computer just ignores anything after a hashtag. Okay, and you'll see that it goes green as well, just to help you distinguish um, the comment from the code. I want you to get used to putting comments into your code. You'll actually get more marks if you include comments in your code. And it's a really good way to help people understand what you're talking about in your code. All right, so we've got the first line of code done there. The second line of code is actually going to set up the speed that we want our wheels to move at today. So I'm going to write movement underscore motors again. And I'm going to write dot set default speed with an underscore between each of those words. Now, set default speed is actually a function or a snippet of code that is coming from the spike library that we were talking about before. Okay, now what we're going to do here um, is just tell the computer in brackets how fast we want our wheels to move. It can be anywhere between 0 and 100%. So I'm going to start at half speed today by writing 50 in brackets. That means I want my movement motors to move at 50% of their actual speed. Uh, you can change that if you want. If you want to go flat out at 100%, by all means go for it. Just be aware, a lot of people try to write like 200% or 1000% thinking they're going to go at a million miles an hour. That doesn't happen. 
a hundred is the absolute limit. So if you write a number bigger than a hundred, uh, the robot knows it just has to go back to a hundred percent speed. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to stick with 50% speed today, and I'd recommend starting on that so you're not moving too fast. All right, so that's looking good. We've set up our ports, so we know that they're plugged into ports A and B. We've got our robot moving at 50% speed. The last thing we need to put in now is the line of code that tells our robot to actually move and how far it needs to move. Actually, before I do that, I might put a comment in quickly here. This says set the movement speed of the motors. Okay, sorry, let's go down to the next line here. So to get our robot moving, we need to write in the name of our motors again. So movement motors. And this time we're going to use a function called move. So we write dot move. Now this function move comes from the spike library again. And it's going to get our robot moving. We just need to tell it exactly how far we want to move. So if I want to move 50 centimeters, I would write 50, comma, and then in quotation marks, I'd write centimeters. We can move in inches, rotations, we can move in, I think, degrees, and for a number of seconds. There's all sorts of um, different ways you can move your robot. But for what we're doing this term, we're going to pretty much stick with centimeters most of the time. Okay, so all that line of code there says is move your robot forward 50 centimeters. So I'll put in a comment that says move the robot forward. That's all you need to make your robot drive forward. I know I babbled on a little bit here, but basically we have told the computer we're plugged into ports A and B for our wheels. We've told the robot we're going to be moving at 50% speed. And then we've told the robot we want it to move for 50 centimeters. I think that's all we need to talk about. Okay, so what we're going to do is making sure our robot, whoops, sorry, make sure our robot is in a um, safe location where it's not going to fall off a table or anything. And it's got 50 centimeters room in front of it. You can press play and watch what happens. Mine was working pretty well then, so hopefully your robot drove forward 50 centimeters. Once you're finished, make sure you press the stop button down the bottom here. So it's as easy as that to get your robot moving forward, but what if we want to move backwards? Well, it's actually very simple. It's pretty much the same line of code. Let's have a look. We're going to go down below this one. So we're going to leave that one in there, the one that moves forward 50 centimeters, and we might move backwards by 50 centimeters just to move it back. To where it started. So we write movement motors dot move and instead of going forward 50 centimeters to go backwards we write minus 50 and again we put centimeters in the quotation marks and I'm just going to put a final comment in that says move the robot backward. Okay and that's it so let's test it one more time by pressing play. And that looked pretty good to me, so that was working very well. Okay, so hopefully yours is working well. If things are not working, um, sometimes you will see the little light on your power button, which is on the hub of your robot, flash red. Yeah, if that happens, you need to go to your console and read the error that pops up. So I might try and make an error in my code here, just to show you what it looks like. So I'm just going to run my code. Now my robot's going to go forward 50 centimeters first, and then it's going to go backwards. Well, it tries to go backwards, but it's come up with an error. I saw my little red light flash, and you get this bunch of weird writing down here that you've got to try and interpret. Okay, The easiest way to interpret is look for which line of code has the error. So it says line 7 has an error in my program, and it says that the motor pair object has no attribute MVE. So what it's saying is basically I've made a spelling mistake here on line number seven. I've left the O out of move. So if I put the O back in and run it again, we should be able to get our robot going forwards and then backwards. Okay, so that error now has disappeared and my robot is working as intended once again. Okay, so you'll get probably quite a few errors over the next few weeks in your code and usually they're just a spelling mistake or you've forgotten to put an underscore or a full stop somewhere or 
yeah, there's lots of little errors that you'll come across. It's your job to try and interpret what the console is saying to try and work out where your errors are so you can try and fix them. Okay, uh, but I think I've talked enough in this video, so that's enough for this tutorial. You now know how to move your robot forwards and backwards using Python code. It is quite simple. In the next video, we might have a look at turning left and right. So I'll see you in that video.